Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Pathways service for September. Once again, uh, we're very sad we can't be with you in person, but we're very glad to be able to offer you this service on video. And Kath and Pat and myself, Simon, um, from St. Mark's Church, uh, we're very glad to be able to serve you in this way. We want to begin this morning by reading Psalm 121, the 121st Psalm. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Kathy has another Bible reading for us from Luke's Gospel. Hello, my name's Kathy, and um, just want to say hi to all my Pathways friends. And I'm going to be reading from <clears throat> Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story Kathy just read for us is one that I suspect many of you are very familiar with. It's the story of Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus and the friends of Jesus. And it tells of the time when Jesus came to visit their home. And Martha especially was eager to welcome him. She knew how important Jesus was. So she was hospitable. And she busied herself with preparing a meal for Jesus and all his disciples who had likely turned up with him. And there's nothing in Martha's actions that should cause us to despise her. And yet her sister responds very differently to Jesus' arrival. She too knows how important Jesus is. But Mary doesn't get involved in all the cooking and cleaning that Martha seems caught up with. Rather, she chooses to simply sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him. Well, as you know, the conflict in this story comes when Martha gets frustrated with her sister and with Jesus. And she complains to Jesus about Mary. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus' response is very memorable. He refuses to tell Mary to help. Instead, he suggests that what Mary has chosen to do is better than what Martha has done. Jesus is not being critical of Martha, but he certainly will not be critical of Mary. She has chosen the one thing, he says, that's really essential. Listen again to the tender but firm way Jesus speaks to Martha. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So what's the point Jesus is making? The key thing seems to be this. It's better to be a humble listener than a busy servant. 
Martha was definitely serving, wasn't she? And this kind of service is something that God esteems. But, Jesus says, there's something even more important than serving, something more essential, listening. And that's because of who Jesus is. Showing hospitality to people who visit you is always good. But if the Son of God should pay you a visit, then taking time to hear what he has to tell you, that's even more important than getting the dinner ready. It's because he's God's son that there's nothing more important than listening to what he says. Now, of course, for you and me now who don't have Jesus with us in person, listening to him means reading or listening to his words in the Bible like you are today. It means remembering what you've read in the Bible over the years, reflecting on it, treasuring it. It means storing up God's word in your heart that you might find encouragement from it every day. And like Martha, we too can get distracted from this. We can be distracted by being busy. We can be distracted by our worries. And even distracted by our service of other people. But Jesus reminds us this morning that whatever else we do each day, we must do this. We must listen to what he says. And did you notice that wonderful word of reassurance that Jesus spoke at the end of our passage? He said that what Mary had chosen would not be taken away from her. I think in earlier years when I'd read this passage, I hadn't particularly noticed that line. But it's dawned on me recently just how important it is. Jesus says, When you seek me, you will find me. If it's me you want, it's me you'll have. And people can take all manner of things from you, but they can't take my words from you. You can lose your ability to serve. You can lose many of the things you've spent your life worrying about. You can lose your health. You can lose your independence. You can lose people you love. But if you know the words of Jesus, you'll have them forever. And no one can ever take them from you. I think that's a very precious promise. And I hope it's a deep encouragement to you today. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Hi, everyone. My name is Pat, and I'm going to be leading us in prayer. Please pray with me. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Strengthen your people for their witness and work in the world and empower your ministers faithfully to proclaim the gospel and to administer your holy sacraments. Unite in the truth all who confess your name, that we may live together in love and proclaim your glory in all the world. Give wisdom to those in authority in every land and guide all peoples in the way of righteousness and peace so that they may share with justice the resources of the earth, work together in trust and seek the common good. We commend to your keeping, Father, ourselves and each other, our families, our neighbours and our friends. Enable us by your spirit to live in love for you and for one another. Comfort and heal, merciful Lord, 
all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. Give them a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who minister to them and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. And we praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age and pray that we, with all who have died in the faith of Christ, may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of your eternal kingdom. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We've now got a hymn for you. It's a wonderful old hymn called Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. It reflects on the return of Christ to the world one day.
It's a wonderful hymn, isn't it? We're so glad that you could uh, join us this morning from where you are in Pathways. Uh, we look forward to bringing you another service uh, next month. You continue to be in our prayers and in our hearts. God bless everyone.